Now, before this video starts, I am getting back into one-on-one -on -one coaching. So if you're interested in learning how I find winning products, build e-commerce teams, create custom ads and custom websites, and really teach you how to scale from zero to one grand a day, you can book a call with me down below. And I'm also really excited to be reopening my Discord. So again, it's very lonely. It's crickets. There's only 11 people, but I really want to build an awesome community. So if you want to talk to me directly, get your questions answered and have a ton of resources to help you scale your brand, click that link down below, get involved and I cannot wait to be talking with each one of you. If you run a dropshipping or e-commerce brand and you're looking to start and scale your brand on TikTok, then this is the video for you. Congratulations, Buster, because today I'm going to teach you exactly how to set up TikTok for your Shopify brand, how to start testing products on a lower budget, and also my favorite ways of scaling after millions of dollars in ad spend and managing hundreds of different ad accounts. So let's get through the nitty gritty. So to set up TikTok, it's Fairly simple. All you have to do is go to the Shopify app store, look up TikTok, and then once you install it, it will show up as a sales channel. So you click on sales channel, then TikTok. And really, when you're going to the setup process, it's pretty simple. It asks you to create a new business. So you either log into an account that you already made, if you already have an agency account, which if you are interested in getting an agency account where you can target every single country in the world compared to a ad account that might just be specific for your country that you're from, then you can actually click the link down below and get an agency account for 3% of your ad spend. I mean, as you can see, Daddy Ethan's been reaching in the cookie jar for these ad accounts. I mean, I got like one, two, maybe 130 of them. So really, it's a great deal, especially at 3% ad spend. Most agency accounts will cost you at least $1,000 to $2,000. So if you're interested, link is in the bio. But after you get your agency account set up or your normal account, if you're a noob, then you can just log into it pretty simply. Now for me, since I'm already logged into TikTok ads, there is a chance that it'll just ask you to connect, which is they're gonna be the best option for you. Now, after this, it's gonna ask you to connect an ad account to this Shopify store. So you can go with two different options. A, you create the new ads manager, or if you already have that ads manager ready to go, then you just connect the one that is your agency account. So for me, I might just do this Alto one. Let's say that's the agency account that I have made. So we just click connect, pretty easy to go. And the next thing would be your pixel. You always wanna do maximum, get the broadest audience going on. And then for pixel, I usually like to create a new pixel when I start a new business. So just like that, we will click on confirm. And honestly, even having a pixel on your store, there's a lot of contention around that. So we'll get into that a little bit later, but that is how you set things up in Shopify. Now, the next thing I would recommend setting up before you launch your campaign is having those columns. You need to have your numbers ready to go on what you're going to analyze. Now, you don't need to have all these analytics. This is just personally what I like to have. So first off, I always like to do what's my total cost? How much am I spending? Then my CPM, that's just really a good gauge for me to see, okay, are we spending in the right places? Because if my CPM is above a certain number, typically above 10 to 20, I usually think, all right, I need to go broader here, maybe try out some different locations. Maybe that could be what it is. I'm just doing the United States and my CPM's 30. So let me try the big four countries and see if that lowers. Next things are pretty self-explanatory. So how many clicks am I getting? Now, the total view content, the reason why I have this, I know most people don't, is because I can see uh, from the amount of people that clicked, let's say 100 people click on my ad, I want to make sure I'm as close as 100 view contents as possible to the clicks. Because I know if 100 people click my ad and and let's say only 80 of them actually view content, which is viewing your product page. I know I have a speed score issue. So it's a nice little gut check to see, all right, is my website converting well? So that's personally why I like to have it. You may not have it. It's up to you. Now, the next thing, CPC, pretty self-explanatory. CPC, CTR, these are both for my ads. So for CPC, I tend to aim a 50 cents or lower. Honestly, because CPMs are a little bit higher now on TikTok, I would say anything under a dollar is pretty decent. But the most important thing is always, are your ads profitable? So if I have a CPC that's above 50 cents. I'm not shooting myself. I'm not hitting the red panic button. I'm just seeing, all right, that doesn't really matter too much. That's more of a secondary metric, but it's just something I like to analyze. Now, next thing, CTR, how many people are clicking through my ad? I mean, you get the gist. Now, add to carts, stuff like this. Again, it's just for my websites. I like to see how many people are adding to cart, conversions, CPA, all this stuff. And now the things that might be a little bit more foreign to people is the video views, two second video views. I mean, it's a very self-explanatory metric, but why do I actually have it? So for me personally, when I'm analyzing my ad, I don't just look at CTR. I like to look at a thing called hook rate and hold rate. Now, for your hook rate, that is how many people that actually start your ad watch the first three seconds. Now on TikTok, they don't have a three second video play option. It's just two second video plays, which kind of sucks. But when you're doing the calculations, I can see, all right, 22,000 people 
clicked on my ad to start watching and about 9,000 of them actually watched the first two seconds. So for me, typically a good hook rate on TikTok is above 30%. So I would just basically divide these numbers, 9,000 divided by 22,000, and let's see if I'm above that metric. And as we can see right there, my hook rate is 43%. So if I can get almost nearly half of the people to watch the hook, that's a really, really good start for the ad. So I know my ads are doing really well in that hook section, but the next important metric is how many people that watch the hook are actually completing the ad ad because it's great if they watch the hook but if they're not watching the rest of the ad and getting sold on the product then there's an issue there because typically your highest CTR is always going to be at the end of your ads in the call to action section so how you actually come up with that number is typically video views at 100% divided by how many people watch the first three seconds so here 1300 divided by 9774 so let's just do the math and that's about 13% so for me I don't really like my number to be I would say anywhere below 25% on TikTok so I know clearly the hold rate is a bit of an issue. So I should probably keep the hooks that I'm already using, but then play around a bit with the second clip and the third clip. So the problem, the demonstration, the social proof, clearly I need some more engaging clips. Otherwise people aren't going to watch the rest of the ad and click to my website. But I would say easily the most important metric of them all is my break even CPA. How much does it cost for me to break even to acquire customers? So let's say I sell a product for $25. It costs me $5. I have a $20 break even CPA because if I have a customer that buys my product, and I spend $20 to acquire them, I make no money. So for this, I always will look at each ad group when I am running ads and I'm like, all right, am I below this $20 CPA? Okay, here we go, 35, turn it off. 22, turn it off, $9 keep it on $10 keep it on so it's a pretty easy metric to analyze and again I mean even if I have let's say a $10 CPA which is great let me scroll back down okay my CTR 0.6 that's not great 0.7 for the cost per click it's not ideal but hey we're still profitable which is the most important thing but maybe it might be good for me when I'm really trying to optimize things to play around with either the hook or the hold rate so that's where you have those different metrics because when you're playing around with different things in your ad you have to understand okay where is the leakage is it in the opening hook or is it the hold rate so the rest of the ad so that's why i like to have those metrics when i am analyzing the ad performance now hold on cowboy i see that you haven't liked and subscribed down below which honestly is a tragedy so i'll give you a few seconds right now to do that all right let's get back into the video now just because i'm a math wizard and i want to bore you to death in this tutorial i want to actually teach you guys how to calculate a 20 percent profit margin for instance because that's typically what we aim for in the e-commerce industry and it's great to know yeah how do i break even i think that's a really easy metric to calculate because yeah you just do your sale price minus your cogs but in order to do a 20 percent profit margin all you really have to do is calculate all right what is 20 percent of my aov and then you would subtract that from your break even cpa which i know it sounds complicated complicated when I'm just saying as words, but let me show you an example. So let's say for instance, I'm selling a product that costs $50 and then it costs me, let's say $20. So I know my break even CPA is 30. If I get any cost per purchases under that, then I am profitable. But what CPA goal do I need to get to, to achieve 20% profit margin? Well, I would take 20% of my AOV, which is $50. That is typically how much I sell my product for. Now your AOV might be a little bit higher. If you're running an e-commerce brand, it might be a hundred dollars, it might be 150, but I typically like to get how much are people usually spending on my website I get 20% of that number and then subtract it by my break even. So let's say it's 50, for instance. So 20% of that is $10. So we would just do 30 minus 10, just like that. And then we know $20 would be my 20% profit margin CPA. So if I get cost per purchases below $20, I know, all right, I'm at a 20% margin or greater. And if you're still living under a rock and you're using ROAS as your major thing, which I mean, there's so many issues with that that I don't want to begin, you would just have to do something like 50, so your AOV, whatever you're selling your product at, and then you divide it by that 20% profit CPA. So we know in this instance, it was 20, so it would just be this. So 2.5 would be how I get to 20% profit. So now let's get down to business because I know you're not here just to watch me calculate numbers. You're here for the testing strategy. Everyone's here. It's like a zoo. You're always there for the giraffes. And you see this neck? You got him, all right? So when we do my testing strategy, it's pretty simple. So you obviously, you would go to your dashboard, you would click on set up a new campaign. And because I love hand feeding you, I will literally click and show you exactly where that is. So you click the giant create button, then you are gonna click on website conversion. Now, personally for me, just because I, I don't know, I like making money, I tend to do purchases as my conversion event. You can do link clicks if you hate making money, you know, it's up to you, but we're gonna do custom mode 
go to website conversions. And then when it comes to the campaign name, I will name it usually the name of the product that we're selling. So for this tutorial, I'm going to do the mushy. You will see what that product is a little bit later. Don't get any suggested provocative ideas in your head. Now, I like to do my 20% break even CPA, that 20% margin CPA. So let's say for instance, that is a CPA of $20. So we'd go into here and continue. Now from here, for pixel, we would select the pixel we already created. So we do this one right here, and then we would do complete payment. Now, in terms of placements, we're still gonna do TikTok only. There's not gonna be anything new here. Now, when it comes to user comment, I would recommend leaving this on. This is a change because I've noticed when you have an engaging ad that is getting a lot of comments, it is becoming more like Facebook where TikTok will get you lower CPM. So I would highly recommend having an engaging ad, have a controversial hook. It could be my stepsister gave me the mushy last night and boy, oh boy, did it change my life. And then everyone's like, yeah, what the hell is the mushy? I don't know. You'll see a little bit later on. But yes, I would recommend having user comment turned on. You can actually check where your comments are just by going to assets and comments. So if you are really just like, yeah, I don't know about the comment section. Maybe I want to monitor and delete comments that will have people talking crap about my product. Then yes, you can monitor that. And then when we scroll on down ACO, you know, that used to be a bit of a fad, I would say a couple months ago. I mean, we're somewhat playing around with it when we are scaling. I wouldn't recommend it for testing. And again, this is all my personal opinion. You can play around with these things. As a media buyer, honestly, I think it's really negative to just look at a tutorial and then copy exactly what you're learning. A lot of the times, the best media buyers are always constantly testing. And just to show you an example, this is one of my ad accounts right here where we scaled this brand to a grand a day. And look at all the different things we're doing. We're doing ABO duplication. We are doing bid caps. We are doing USA only. We're doing so many different creatives. We're doing day parting at different times. When you're a media buyer, your job honestly is more of a scientist. You are split testing a lot of different ideas to see what works the best because what works the best on one ad account will not transfer over to all ad accounts. So I might tell you, hey, in my experience, broad has always worked super well for me. And then when you go out and test broad, it'll suck for you. So maybe it makes sense for you to test just testing interest. And I have seen on some ad accounts, interest will work better than broad. It's all about playing around with things. If you're noticing whatever you're testing initially isn't working, play around with things. Don't just say, okay, let me stick with the same testing strategy for the next 100 years because that's not how TikTok works. Now, in terms of countries, I like to do the big four as of right now. So I like to do United States, Canada, Australia, and then United Kingdom. So if you don't have access to those big four countries, so let's say, for instance, you're on a new bad account, which is actually the one I'm on right now, you can see when I look up United Kingdom, it is not available. And that's because I'm not on an agency ad account. So I'll give you one last shot. If you want to get the agency ad account, hey, it's down below. It's technically free. It's just 3% of your ad spend. So you spend $100, that's $3. And honestly, that's a steal. But just to show you, this is what an agency ad account will look like. So you'd get United Kingdom, you can do Australia and target those bloody Aussies and freak me dead. We got Australia right there. It's absolutely beautiful. So I would recommend the agency account. Again, I'm going to stop plugging it. You get the gist. Now, in terms of gender languages, I really don't play around with that. I mean, gender, I might play around if the product is obviously specific for a specific gender because I don't want to waste my ad spend. Ages, I really rarely ever play around with that stuff. Again, you have to do the research. So there might be a security product you're selling, which yes, it is only for 35 and above. I typically though like to go in the option of let's go broad and then react to the data. Let's see what the data is saying. And after a few days of running ads, if we do notice, okay, it is definitely performing really well for older demographics or younger demographics, then yes, let us get into to narrowing down to just those age groups. Household income, I have not really played around too much with that, so I'm not gonna really just tell you anything until I do. Uh, and then when it comes to interest, I still believe in broad, I really do. That is just what's working the most on the majority of ad accounts that we manage. And as you can see, it's quite a lot, but again, this is something where you should be playing around. It might make the most sense for you to, let's say do five ad groups when you're starting out, and then maybe three of those are broad and then two of them have interest. Again, you should play around. I am just a random guy on the internet who is just telling you my experience. I am not the foremost expert. That's not the Bible here of the 10 commandments. So personally though, for me, I like to do five ad groups that are identical, that are broad, because again, your ads are still going to be shown to different audiences. Broad is a lot of people. It's a hundred million people. So just because all your ad groups are broad doesn't mean they're going to be marketed to the same people, which is a common misconception. And then in terms of daily budget, I like to do $25. I noticed with $20 that tends to have spending issues. So I like to raise my bid a little bit to $25 a day. Then getting to the rest of the things, I do like to schedule my ads for the next day. I typically like to do these at about seven in the morning. It's up to you. Sometimes you can do midnight. 
I don't think it plays around and messes up things too much. And then for day parting, I do all day when I initially test. And then for conversion, I do lowest cost to start. I would say though, you can obviously get into cost caps, bid caps, stuff like that a little bit later on when you are scaling to figure out, all right, what bid works the best. But that's for a little bit further in the video. So now we're into the ad creation screen. Now, the first part might seem very minute, very innocuous, but a lot of people have been split testing custom identities. Now, personally, because I'm a good boy, I'm a square. I don't like to really push the rules. I like to just do my business name and then my logo, as you can see right there. But what some people will do, and I'm not saying that I do this and anybody that's watching this FBI TikTok headquarters, but what some people do, and believe me, I hate that they do it. It's honestly disgusting, is they will put a celebrity's name or they'll put another business. And I actually do really don't recommend that. Sometimes I will though put my name. I literally will just put my name and then put a picture of myself because then it feels native to TikTok. But some people will do something like Miley Cyrus or a celebrity so that it's like, holy crap. Is this really them? And hey, if you want to feel like Adam Levine for a day or see what your conversion rate is when you are Adam Levine, then it's up to you. Personally, I don't want to play that game. I think it's a little too risky, but some people do. Now, when it comes to obviously uploading your ads, it's a pretty simple process. You just click on upload and then you just grab whatever ads you have. So for me, I always like to do three ads. I've tested five, I've tested six. Three seems to be that happy number for me. So you just click on upload and then TikTok will upload all three creatives to the audience that you're marketing to. And then the final thing is really just getting your URL. So for me, I will always do my product page. So got my URL copied, ready to go. Now for call to action button, I mean, this is really nerding out if you do split test this. I'm just gonna do standard shop now. I like to keep it simple. And then for captions, I usually will do the main headline for my product page. So if I go to audio blade right here, the best sound at the best price, I'll usually do something like that or a sale. So I might say 40 percent off sale and soon so it's up to you if you want to do urgency or a benefit again that's something uh, you would definitely want to recommend split testing i know i sound like an old geezer here you just gotta split test everything you never know what's gonna work so i put in a little custom identity here now when it comes to the creative name you obviously need to have a very complex naming system that allows you to know immediately what type of ad format what kind of angle that you use for the ad that you use so my professional scientific method in fact if you share this with anyone else I'll have to sue you. It's this right here. Add one, add two, and add three. And I know what you're thinking. I can't possibly do a naming system that complicated, but you know what? That's just where the pros really separate themselves. Now, the final thing you do is if you have any UTM parameters, UTM URLs. So if you're using, let's say high roast, for instance, you would just paste it right here into the impression tracking URL and then boom, sorry, I got a little bit ahead of myself there. You got to make sure the URL and the text is obviously in the other ads. And typically when you click on duplicate after uploading one ad, it does duplicate the URL and the text. But in this case, you know what? I'm a dummy. Can't believe I'm actually making a tutorial on this. It blows my mind. And the fact you're watching it too, geez Louise, not going to lie. You must be pretty bored on a Monday afternoon, but getting into the rest of it so once you have your ad group right here we're going to click on copy and then do four copies just like that so we're going to have four identical copies and each one of these it's up to you what you want to do again you can split test doing a mixture of interest versus no interest you could split test countries so you might have one that's united states versus doing big four there's so many different things you can split test personally though if you're wondering what i do I literally just do five ad groups that are exactly the same. But obviously you wanna make sure everything's good so I got complete payment. And then when we scroll on down, when it comes to this, this is the really important thing. When you do click duplicate, it will run immediately as soon as you upload. As you can see, filming this way past my bedtime. So we're gonna do seven o'clock just like that on the dime. And today is the 29th, so that'll work just swell. And then after that, we just click on submit and we will have our five ad groups, $25 a day, all ready to go. We have the right columns and those three ads will duplicate into each one of those audiences. So that is how I personally like to test any product. Now, my big caveat though, with my testing method is I do test products for at least two days. So depending on your budget, you might not have $250 to initially test a product for two days like that. And you might have, let's say only $100 to test a product. So in that instance, you can do a CBO with five ad groups, literally copying exactly how I did it, but you're just not doing ABO, which is setting the budget at the ad set level. So to set up a quick CBO, we click on website conversions, scrolling down here, obviously name your campaign for now. We're just not going to do that because you just need to follow this step, campaign budget optimization, and then daily $50 
five ad groups. You do the exact same setup. That is the only difference. And then you let that run for two days, look at the data. And then from there, we'll see if we have any ad groups that are profitable that we can start scaling. And hold on, Buster. I can hear you barking already, drooling to hear the scaling strategies. But before we do that, I would also recommend understanding how do you test new creatives? Because on TikTok, the big thing with it is that it does eat creatives for breakfast. A good strategy is always to be testing a new ad every single week. So what I would recommend doing when you're testing new ads, let's say you made five new ads, I would do honestly the exact same structure that we just did of doing five separate ad groups that are pretty much identical in every single way. And you might do that broad, or if you already have data on what's working, let's say I have an interest ad group that's working extremely well, it could be nature. What I would do is I would create a new campaign, five ad groups that are all identical. They have the interest of nature. And then when it comes to the ad, I give each ad group one new ad creative. So if I'm testing five new ads, then I will have five ad groups, each of them with one of those new five creatives. So again, it's really simple. You do website conversions. You would just name this a sandbox campaign or a creative testing campaign, whatever you want to call it. And I, that's pretty much the major campaigns I like to have. I like to have my major scaling campaign, my testing campaign, and then my sandbox campaign for testing new creatives. So this would be my testing new creatives. And then again, you just go through the process of making your ad group and then uploading one ad into to this one, duplicating that ad group four times, and then you would delete that ad that had been duplicated so that you can put a new ad in each one of those ad groups. So if that's too complicated for you, basically ad group one would have new ad one, ad group two would have new ad two, ad group three would have new ad three. I think you understand. But based on that, what you would do after a few days of looking at the data is seeing, okay, which ad group performed the best. And if you know, all right, let's say ad group three with ad three performed the best. All right, let's graduate ad three into our major campaign. So you'll already have your initial testing campaign, which will probably have that nature ad group scaling. So when you're noticing, all right, my nature ad group that's been scaling for a while is starting to die down. Let me put ad three into the mix so that I can keep things rolling because that ad group has already gotten a ton of data. It's already well optimized. And if you're wondering, how does that look? So let's say for instance, this is the ad group that's working really well for me. So what I would do, it's really simple. I would just delete the ads that are not performing really well. So I just click on delete, pause, really doesn't matter. And then all we would do is just create a new ad. So it's that simple just turn off the ads that aren't performing any well for you. And then you would upload that ad three that is now performing really well on that sandbox campaign and add it to your best performing ad group. Alrighty, Chico's Venaki. So we need to get into scaling. And I like to keep it really simple in the beginning with my testing campaign. So let's say for instance, you're testing a product for two, three days. It's working pretty well for you where you have some audiences that are profitable. What is the next steps? Well, for me, I like to duplicate my winning ad groups. So when I look at this campaign right here, I can see clearly I had duplicated this ad group a bunch of times. This one was working really well for me and it was working in another campaign. So when I have an ad group working well, I just basically duplicate it sometimes five times into a new campaign at a higher budget. So Let's say I'm starting at $25 a day, it's working really well for me. And let's say again, it's the water bottle ad group. So I will duplicate the water bottle ad group five times into a new campaign and I might do $40 a day with each ad set. So as we can see right here, look at all of these duplicates. These are pretty much all of the same right here. This is duplicate 10, nine, eight, and that is the easiest way of scaling. You just see what's already working. So, hey, look at the data. This one's got a $9 complete payment. All right, what I'm gonna do, click on copy, We'll make five copies. You can make 10 copies. Again, the number really doesn't matter. And then we just do a new campaign and we do ABO scaling duplicates. You can name this however you want. And all we would do is just click on copy like that. And then you would set that new budget. So we click on continue. Right now, I know it's gonna be at most likely 20, 25. And then yeah, let's do something like 40. You can do 50. It's up to you. Maybe you do the same exact budget, but again, you're still spending more money because now there's five more duplicates. Now I do sometimes get questions about that, even though it's really simple of, should I turn off my original ad set? Listen here, buddy. People literally die. They sacrifice every single morsel of their time and attention. They still live with their parents so that they can eventually have a profitable ad group they can scale. So when you get to that point and you have that luxury, don't be the idiot that says, uh, should I turn it off? Should I turn off the money printer that's literally making me money right now? I mean, do I got to slap some sense into you? I mean, do I got to turn into Andrew Tate? Because no, you obviously don't turn it off. It's a money printer. It's like Hustlers University. So no, we're not going to turn that off. So you just have the original on along with the new one. Now, the other way you can scale it. I know that one's really, really simple. Just duplicate what's working. The next one, which I know people get a little bit excited is doing a bid cap optimization event. So this is how you set up a scaling bid cap campaign. Now, 
I would highly recommend just testing one audience, your most profitable one. If it's doing broad, all right, let's just set up then broad. So I'll do typically one new campaign, five ad groups, and I'll test five new bids. Now, if you got the money like that, you can test 10 new ad groups and 10 new bids because it really is about first getting what is the dollar amount, which optimizes the best with TikTok. So let's say for instance, I'm selling this water bottle. My break even is $20. I typically will do bids around that break even profit. So I'll do something, let's say, you know, we're setting this up, you know, we're doing, typically I like to do ABO. So we'll just go into this, we'll name it bid testing. And then obviously you're gonna set up your ad group, but for the sake of time, I'm not gonna do that. And then we're gonna make sure we're still in conversion. Do not make the mistake of doing click and then bid cap. We wanna do conversion then do a cost cap. I know they're very similar. I don't know why they're that similar. So we're going to get into it. I first like to do a $20 bid dot 33 cents. Don't ask me why. That just seems to be what gets TikTok to spend the most because honestly, the biggest problem you typically have with bids is just getting TikTok to spend your whole budget. So you might have a budget on this ad group of let's say $25. Sometimes TikTok will spend $2 three dollars it really depends on whatever your bid is to see if tiktok actually does spend now it's saying one dollar don't listen to tiktok tiktok stupid so you'll do twenty dollars 33 in one ad group and then the next one we would do 21 we would do then another one at 22 then 23 then you might do some that are lower you might do 19 dollars. you might do 18 dollars. and that's pretty much exactly what i did in this campaign right here you can see i did 11 33 10 33 9 33 8 33 again i was playing around with a lot of different bids and then eventually i figured out oh Oh, $15 is what was working the best. And that was still below my break even purchase price. So I was like, yeah, I'm cool with that. And then from there, you're just going to play around with the cent. So for me, I like to then do 10 different ad groups. I know, okay, 1530, that's typically the range. So let me do a bid at 1530, 1531, 1532. And each one of those is different ad groups. So I'll have one ad group at 1530, the next ad group at 1531, and it keeps on going on till 1539. So we'd have 10 different ad groups from there. So we'd see right here, I got my 30s, my 29s, my 33s. And then really from there, you can notice, yeah, some of these don't really spend at all. And that does tend to happen, but eventually you will get the bid that does work the best for you. And then you'll scale just that bid. So let's say 1530 is that magical number. All right, from there, let's do five ad groups, $50 a day, just do that bid. And then you would just go through the same process of duplicating it. So using both of those scaling methods we just learned. Now, another smart way of scaling is obviously looking at your data. What is the data telling you? So for instance, let's go to this campaign right here and we're going to go to view data and we're going to see where are our conversions coming from. Now, this will depend. Sometimes TikTok will report this data. Sometimes it doesn't. But let's just go over to our audience and we are going to go to conversion. So from here, we can get the breakdown. All right, age, we can see younger demographic is definitely the one buying the majority of these. So I think this was 26 purchases in this campaign. And we can see 18 to 24 is the majority. We got some older ones, but yeah, it's pretty much the majority is the younger audience. So when I am setting up my scaling, let's say, I have that winning ad group and it's just broad. It might make sense to duplicate would we'll do five new ad groups into a new campaign. And we just do 18 to 24 and we see how that performs. So we can start narrowing down based on the data. And then obviously there's other things so we can see gender and all right, it's pretty much dead even. So for that one, I would say, all right, let's not narrow down. It's too inconclusive to really come up with anything. Then we can get a breakdown by country and region. But for this, obviously, I just did United States. But if you are doing the big four, then you can start split testing and then narrowing down into certain countries. Now, another way you can scale once you have some winning ad groups is doing day parting. Now, this still does work for me. So let's say, for instance, I got that winning ad group. I'll typically, again, do five ad groups or 10 ad groups. You're probably noticing a bit of a trend. So we do five ad groups. I usually will do, again, the same budget of 20 five dollars a day and then i'll do some day parting now day parting is pretty simple to set up you just go into select specific time and for me typically i will do the window of 7 to 11 so just like that and then based off of that you can sometimes see yeah what are my best hours so literally just look at your shopify store go to your analytics and see at what time are we making the most sales i know this is a dead store it's just for template but then based off that data you can see oh Okay, seven to 9 a.m. is what's working best for me. So then, hey, let's just consider doing only seven to nine, just like that. So super simple, super easy to do. Now, another pretty cool way of scaling up is doing Spark ads. So 
Doing spark ads, it's pretty simple. You just set up your normal ad groups. Let's say I want to do five ad groups all broad. And then when we go to the ad section, we're going to do use TikTok account to deliver spark ads. And then you just click the link account button and it will ask you to log into your normal TikTok account. So just like that, we can see Ethan Dobbins for authorized and then it will show up like a normal user is posting this ad. So again, it's another way of Trojan horsing your ad. A lot of people have seen great success with spark ads and you can also get authorizations to other big accounts to run ads from their account as well. Now, because this is not a business account, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but typically after you create your account or connect your account, then it will give you an option of yes, which TikTok post you can turn into an ad that you have already posted. So that way you can get more engagement to your account. And it's also a nice way of scaling. So just to show you a quick instance, I got my Mary slides account again Christmas slides you've probably seen these then we can go to TikTok posts just like this click on our ad that we want to use to really publish and get more traffic got the URL ready to go and then we click on save and that is how you scale using spark ads so you would just basically upload your ads onto your TikTok account and you can get a ton of engagement more followers that way and also it's a nice thing to split test and I would say the final thing you do even though I've given you a hundred thousand ways to skin a cat here is doing a CBO when scaling so you can set up a CBO where you have again five ad groups, 10 ad groups, whatever you have of your performing ad groups. And then you just do the CBO budget of $100 a day with your best performing creative. And that's a big thing. When you are doing any of these methods, I would highly recommend identify what's your winning creative and just mainly use that. And then mix in other winning creatives that you find from your sandbox creative testing campaign. So with the CBO, again, you do $100 a day, five ad groups. And if it's working really well, then okay, let's raise the budget the next day from 100 to 140 and then 140 to 200 than 200 to 300. So that's how I would recommend scaling. You can also say, all right, that CBO performed really well. Let me duplicate that campaign, which really isn't an option. You can't just duplicate a campaign like you can at Facebook, but you would just say, all right, let me copy, make the exact same campaign again, but this time raise the budget. So those are all the ways you need to know of how to scale, how to test products. Again, it's a lot of split testing. If that's the major idea I want to get across to you, being a media buyer is never following one system. You always have to keep split testing because every ad account is different. Every product is different. And if you want to scale, you have to be able to adapt.